is win. Every time that I begin, they gon' see it when I come through. Malik Rose. Those were some of the best days of my life. Malik Rose, a uh, two-time champ with the Spurs, also played in a bunch of other places, but we like to concentrate on the Spurs here on this show. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Good to see you, Shell. What's up, fellas? This is What's awesome. Doing? How we doing? This is awesome. Look, it's that time of year, so before we get to the NBA side of things, we we always want to talk to anybody who's had the experience of March Madness. Uh, you obviously had. You won a game with Drexel there, so you, you know what's up, 96. Um, for you, what was it like having that whole hoopla around you man it was great the the year we won it my senior year we had uh kind of gotten embarrassed my sophomore and junior year years uh before but finally getting over the hump being a good memphis state team that year uh it was just great you know a lot of um you know great memories culmination of a lot of hard work and um you know we did something that had never been done before at drexel so still remember it like it was yesterday was penny on that team was was that a penny year or was he gone already no no, Penny, we, we probably would have lost if Penny was on that team. But I uh, know they had um, Renzen Wright, they had uh, Cedric Henderson, Chris Johnson. They had a couple, couple wow. pros, so um, it was a good team. And they were actually picked to come out of that region, but we got lucky and upset them that year, uh, that day. Um, eight seasons in San Antonio, two of those, of course, championship years. Uh, Tim Duncan, finals MVP for both. I, I can't get enough Tim Duncan stories just because he's such a, a mysterious man. But for you, what made him so special? Uh, I don't know. I think we just came around at the same time, you know, same age and same likes and all that stuff. We kind of, you know, we, we bonded over video games and, um, you know, people know Tim is this quiet guy and this, you know, doesn't really say much, but you know, Beetle, like Tim has a great sense of humor. And one of the you know, stories I tell about him is Tim is God is the godfather to my son and my son's name is Miles, but we used to play like Madden football every day. And he wanted me to name, because that was like my favorite game. He wanted me to name my son Madden, and I never would do that. And uh, to this day, he doesn't call his godson Miles. He calls, <laughs> this, he calls him Madden. So uh, that's just a little thing about how Tim is. That's what he wanted, and that's what he's going to have. Um, when we all have these discussions, and we meaning just all media, I feel like his name is either forgotten or purposely left out so many times when we talk about the greats. Do you find that as well, and why do you think it is? Uh, no, I mean, there are a lot of greats out there. And this is a, you know, this, this this subject is very subjective. It's like, you know, depending on the day of the week and who you ask, who's going to be voted the best. I think Tim is the best power forward of all time. And, you know, whether where you want to put him in history, I don't really care. And, and I know he doesn't care. <laughs> uh, I'm just, you know, really happy I had a chance to, to play with him and get to know him both on and off the court because he is a great player, great person, like many of the greats that came before us. And, um, you know, like I said, he, he doesn't care. I think he's the best, and there were plenty of times I wanted to kind of push him down a flight of stairs so he could sit on the side and I can get some minutes. That's what I remember. <laughs> Malik, I agree with you. I think he's the greatest power forward of all time, and, and he's mostly known as this quiet, laid-back guy, right? But you've heard these some stories now coming out, how he's actually hilarious, how he talks trash. KG and, and Boogie Cousins have had great stories. Did, did you hear any of that playing with him or against him, or, or do you have any good stories about him just talking crazy trash <laughs> that we would not expect? No, but uh, it's funny. So uh, you know the KG stories; they take a lot, take on a life of them th themselves. But uh, the, the the Boogie Cousins ones, I didn't know. Uh, Boogie is funny. Like I didn't like the way he tells those stories, and it's funny because I remember going through them in practice. You know, you're going your hardest trying to score at him, and you know he'll he'll good try, good try, young fella. Or you know, like, I, he was right. Like Tim would always hold you down on your shoulder when you go to jump and block the shot. He was a great shot blocker, but that made him even better, but uh, it's funny. I didn't know, you know, Boogie had that type of sense of humor, but he is spot on when he talks about the stuff Tim used to say <laughs> and that would piss you off because he would never, you know, you know, say in a, a bad way or in an angry way, he just talk in his low, mild mannered voice while he's dropping you off and it, it just makes you that much more angry. <laughs> That's like perfect. I hate it when someone's calm but killing me at the same time. Um, the pranking <laughs> stuff, I, I love a good prank. Did he get you with Oreos? Nah, man, that's a source. <laughs> that's a, is that an urban legend? What, yes. what is that? <laughs> that means yes. Uh, all right. So he was good at the pranks, but okay. one guy, Danny Ferry, Danny Ferry on the team. So I had just got this new BMW, like, oh, it was my like my baby. So anyway, long story short, you know how hot it is in San Antonio, mm -hmm. 
like one of those summer days. You know how they pour popcorn in your car sometimes. So this idiot, who's, you know, still a friend to this day, but this idiot um, puts Oreos on the outside of my car. Windshield top back and forth. They get melted in. The car is ruined. Man, I was livid. Oh, no. um, anyway, so, you know, we, it, the sign passes, but it wasn't as good as his. But I, how I got him back, I uh, put an app to sell his car in the paper. And I said he was shipping out to sea, must sell immediately, put his personal phone number in the paper, and people were calling him day and night trying to get his car because I put it at a real oh, low price. The putting the phone number in is right. brutal. Those sound, those sound like good times. Malik, I want to <laughs> ask you, of the two championships that you won with the Spurs, does one mean more than the other? They're both special. 99 was the first one, of course, but I would say 03 is probably more special to me because I got more time then. Wow. <laughs> I, was, uh, I went from probably getting 10, 15 minutes a game to getting about you know 25 minutes a game that, that year. So um, that one was special. And um, I think it was more special because we ended the, uh, the Lakers three-peat. You know, the, the Lakers were dominating. They were beating everybody. And they had beat us pretty good the year before. And uh, to be able to go in there and, and, and when, when end their three-peat on their home port was really, really special to me. Uh, the 99 championship, like people love to sort of knock on the Spurs. You know, there's a nerdy vibe that comes out of San Antonio. And I, I can't even defend it against this next photo because <sighs> here you guys are on the plane playing video games <laughs> with the trophy. <laughs> what a is that time. Sean? Oh, wires. this is aw That's By the way, crazy. it's. Yeah, so many uh, chords. What are y'all playing? This is, this is nerdy, Malik. This is bad. Yeah. Do you want so to defend it? <laughs> no, it's not. That's who we were, man. Like a lot of people played cards on a plane and, and we we kind of tethered up our, our computers and played this game called uh, Star Warcraft. It was Warcraft, uh, worse. Starcraft and Warcraft. And eventually, you know, we got into, um, uh, you know, League of Legends and all that. But back then it was uh, Starcraft. And dude, it didn't stop on the plane. Like we would, if we could have played on the bus, we would have. But we when we got back to the hotel rooms, that's like really all we did. It's a, I don't know if any of you have ever played it, but Starcraft, Warcraft, all those Blizzard games are like amazing. Like just like, you know, they can go on forever and, and we love them. So no, I don't want to defend it. That's who we were, <laughs> but it was kind of corny. By the way, even kids, love it. kids now on road games, they'll bring their little yeah. consoles and little brief kit. There's oh, yeah. way less cords yeah, than it's in that a picture. Completely it's different yeah. Yeah. <laughs> completely different game. Now it's they a, got a whole briefcase full. Yeah, it's it a little more high fancy. tech, but they're doing it. They're playing Call of Duty. They're doing oh, yeah. it. it it's it's there, it still it's goes on. I'm about so. to say it's the same thing. You guys were trailblazers. But Malik, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is it true that David Robinson bought everyone Rolexes after that championship? Yeah, man. Go Think on. about David. Um, he was a watch like guy, David, right? Yeah, but David is probably the the dumbest smart guy I know. Like <laughs> nice guy, but he literally can test on the genius level. And I say that with love because there were plenty of times like Dave would we come out of a huddle and he'd like, you know, Leaky, what what did Pop just draw? What are we running? It's like, damn, Dave, this is a play for you. But um, like, you know, so that year he uh he had a, a million dollar clause, I think, in his contract that if we won the championship, he got a million dollars. So actually while we were back on the plane, we were on the plane playing StarCraft, he says I think I just want, got a million dollars. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we won the championship, I got a million dollars. I'm like, are you serious? It's like, I'm buying all of you Rolexes. And I'm just like, this guy, man. Oh, that's like, that's a good you know, must, That's a nice problem to have, but that's a typical day. Do you still have yeah. that watch? Uh, yeah, I still have it. Yay! <laughs> Rollies never go out, guys. You gotta uh, keep that it's a vintage piece. By the way, it must be nice to buy a teammate a Rolex, guys. Let's keep that in mind, Chandler. Right, Chandler. Christmas, all right, thank Christmas you. is just right around the corner. Yeah, just think about that. Um, all right, so the, back in the day, there was the, that story that Popovich was almost fired, 99, and that Doc was yeah. going to come in. Um, what did you guys know of that, if anything? Well, I, I can speak for myself. I didn't know anything. Obviously, Tim and Dave, knew something because all right so everybody you know Chandler and uh Lou don't notice like you have your regular routine that you go through as a team like pre-game and every time we would you know bring it in before a game I'll never forget it we were at Houston we were six and eight struggling at Houston and um Avery Avery Johnson was the one that usually brought us in all right guys let's bring it in let's you know get it get it together that day Dave brought us in and uh you know I'm second, third year in the league. I'm playing around before the game or whatever. And, and and Dave grabbed me one time. He grabbed me and put that grown man strength on me and said, Lee, cut that BS out. But he didn't say BS. So anybody that knows Dave is like yeah. when he's cursing, he's serious. So I'm like, wait a minute. So like, like I just remember Dave brought us in. 
said, it's a serious game. We need to get this one, guys. We go out, blah, blah, blah. He went out and he led us to victory. But uh, later on, you hear the story, and I know it to be true because Dave brought us in that day, and he was cursing, man. And he, he's, my arm still hurts from when he grabbed me before the game. <laughs> What's crazy is I was 25 years ago, and he still knew that there were six and eight at that time. Right. I know. That's, I, yeah, the memories are... I, listen, I've always been fascinated with Pop, never got an opportunity to play for him, but I've always admired him from a distance. What was it like playing for him? Do you have any good... Uh, what's your best Pop story? Man, <laughs> some I can't say on air or whatever, but no, it's, <laughs> it's great playing for Pop. Like, same with, with Tim. Everyone thinks Tim is one way because they see him on the camera. Same thing with Pop. Like, Pop, you know, back then we called him Short Hair Pop. Like, there are two Pops in, for anyone that's in San Antonio. You got Short Hair Pop, which is before we won anything, and he's, you know, killing us three-hour practices, two-hour film sessions. And then there's Long Hair Pop, who's like, oh, you get a day off, oh, you know, take it easy, We're gonna, you know, minutes minutes restrict you or whatever. So back then it was short hair pop. But um, the thing that I, I love about pop is he's, he, you know, he's true. He's, he's, it's like, it's no middle ground with him. You know, you're going to know where you stand with him at all times. So it's like, he never, you know, lies to you or sugarcoats things. He shoots from the hip and that's, you know, as players, we love that. Just let me know where I stand with you. Let me know what I need to do to, to, to get on the court or whatever. And he'll tell you that, but he, he sows into you. He sows into his players both on and off the court. And as Beatle said, you know, I only played there eight years. I still live down there. But, um, you know, I can call him right now. He'd answer the phone if I had a problem. Like, you know, he sends Christmas cards and all that stuff. So it's like he's he's just real. And it, it goes beyond basketball when, he, when, when you're one of his players. And that's what I treasure most, just the ability to be able to, be able to call him and talk to him about anything, any time of day. Uh, he is definitely in long hair pop mode now. Um, like between oh. last year with Jeremy Sohan, it was like a like his kid. Then you get Wemby, a once in a generation player. Um, I don't know if you took as much joy out of that happening as I did, but right now when you look at Wemby, where do you see him in the landscape? And do you see a world in which you know he's going to be the guy in this league? He's almost the guy now. I mean, that's <laughs> the scary part. Like the guys, just from a skill standpoint off the charts. He might be the most skilled, what, 19-year-old or 20, however old he is, 19-year-old right. I've ever yeah. seen in, in my life. And uh, it's scary how, how 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 good he could be. I'm just just anxious to see his, his progression. And I think he hit the jackpot. I mean, yeah, the Spurs hit the jackpot getting him, but I think he hit the jackpot with a coach like Popovich because um, he's going to get the most out of him. They've they've you know gone the French route before with Tony Parker and it, you know yielded great success. So I think the sky's the limit for him. I'm anxious to see what his career pans out. I just hope you know, you know he avoids all all bad stuff or whatever. You know, just hope he maximum he gets a chance to maximize what looks to be um, just otherworldly talent. Malik, could he be the best spur of all time? Whoa! Like could he like if he stays healthy and avoiding all that stuff? Obviously we know Tim, David, <laughs> Parker, song, Gervin. Could he yeah. be? Does he have to win five, six yeah, like times? Yeah, how, how does he get there? That's not on there. No, I mean, definitely weird. winning. You have to win. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm, by all accounts, he, he's going to be able to do that. Um, that's like if we're projecting and all things, you know, in a, in a Nirvana world, yes, he, he could be. Uh, but like, as we know, he has some big shoes to fill. There are a lot of greats that came before him in San Antonio that have a lot of hardware hmm. and a lot of um, just just cachet in that town. So he has a, a long way to go before he can do that. But if anybody can do it, I will put my money on him because of just how talented and how young he is. And he's got long hair pop who has all the experience in the world guiding his career. <laughs> long hair pop's the one. Also, Malik, I wanted to ask you when, when David Robinson was out back in the day and you were, and you'd go small, you would sometimes play center. You know, at six, yeah. six, six, seven. How was it guarding? Yeah. yeah. How was it? Would it be perfect now? You'd be a perfect small ball five. How was it yeah. guarding guys like like Shaq? You know, at, at that size. Man, I mean, you could call it center or whatever. Like back then, you know, um, I was on non guaranteed contracts as well. So it's like whoever he told me to go guard is who I tried to stop because if Absolutely. I didn't, I was going to get cut. <laughs> um, but no, those are some of the best times because. I would, like in a weird way, I would root for those games. We played like Shaq, or we played Dirk, or Sheed, KG, any of those power fours, those guys in the in the in the West. Because, you know, if Dave did, uh, you know, have his back tighten up or whatever, and he couldn't go, I would get more minutes. So um, I, I loved it because I got a chance to play. Playing behind the Twin Towers isn't easy because 
They're, they're the two greatest players on the team, and they're going to get the lion's share of the minutes. So I did a lot of sitting early in my career, but those days, those days, Dave went out. I absolutely loved them. Going up against Shaq, as painful as it was, I looked forward to it because I was going to get minutes. Was Shaq the hardest player to guard back then? No, 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 no. Shaq, and Shaq is the greatest. Like, you know, he's the diesel. He was tough to guard. But, you know, I, I had a lower center of gravity, so for my job, like, I'm not saying I stopped. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying I, I stopped Shaq, but the job I had to do, it was team defense. So my job when I guarded Shaq was just not to let him get angles for a dunk just make him have to put it down. The minute he put it down, we were coming with a double. So my job was was over. The hardest person for me to guard, and it goes back to high school, I hated this guy because he ended my high school career too, was uh, Rasheed Wallace. Oh, and it was oh, yeah. simply because Rasheed uh, yeah. was seven feet. He shot it from up here. He didn't play with the ball. Like guys that used to play with the ball, I could get up into him and make it tough. But if he just kept, caught it, turned and shot, I was done, and she did that every time. Like, I couldn't stop him. I hated him. Let's talk the poster dunk you had on Matumbo, uh, 2003 finals. Do you, do you remember this? Does it pop in your head random? I mean, I feel like it would if a normal yeah. person was able to pull something like that off. But for you, mm. does this cross your mind occasionally? God, you should have wiggled the finger out. Yeah, I know. And did you think about doing the finger? No, I, I thought about it. It's fun. So <laughs> right before that, we were in a huddle, and uh, Pop got on us, and he yelled at me for something. I think Kenyon Martin got, like, an offensive rebound or something. And as I said, you know, Tim and Dave are there, so if I make the mistake, my minutes are limited. So I wanted to wave the finger, but I'm like, if I get a tech, Pop is going to bench me for the rest of the finals. So <laughs> I'm not going to do it. But it felt really good. Funny story with that. So um, you know, I have the picture, obviously. But um, so we went to Basketball Without Borders in South Africa. And I don't know if any of you have been to South Africa with Mutombo. He is like, you know, three Michael Jordans, a Michael wow. Jackson, and an Obama over there. He is like, <laughs> right. So um, I took 150 of the pictures over there and I gave them all to the campers. So he always does like an autograph signing. So he's thinking the campers are coming up with pictures. I That's mean, with a awesome. paper, Brilliant. they all had the picture of my, my poster on them <laughs> and, and in deep fashion, he laughed or whatever and played it off. He signed them, but uh, no, that, 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 was, that was a great dunk. That's See, though, that's awesome. a good prank. Yeah. That is a perfectly executed prank. Malik, this has been awesome to catch up. I, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. No, thanks for having me. Take thanks, care, man. guys. God. That, that, I would remember it every day. Tyler Hansborough, he's up next.